My name is Christian Harrison. I'm 24 years old, live in Denver, Colorado, and this is Financial Audit. So what do you do 24 years old in Colorado for a living? So my job's a little bit untraditional. Um, I run a door-to-door sales team for s- residential solar systems. Nice. And what are you bringing in on a yearly basis? Last year was a little bit of a down year as 179. 179 is a down year. Okay. I think a lot of people would be happy with that down year. What is it? What was it before? Uh, my best year is 208. This year I took a little bit of a risk, made a move to a new city to start the office. You did? Mm-hmm. This year? Mm-hmm. So like just a few months ago? In November of last year. How's that yep. going so far? It's going good. It's been slower than I expected. Um, financial wise, it's kind of cutting a little bit close in terms of where I want to be and yeah. the money left in my account. But mm. um it's going well, and I think this year will probably be the best one yet. Same products being sold, just yes. different locations. Actually, no. So it's a, a new product. I was doing security systems, then we switched over to solar. Mm. Same company though, just different department. Colorado's not cloudy. No, it's the sunniest, uh, one of the sunniest oh. cities in the U.S. They get sun 300 days a year. All right, well, mm-hmm. good for them. Okay, so from your perspective, what do you think your financial situation is right now? And then give yourself a score zero out of 10. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously it's all relative. For me, it, it's not where I want to be. Um, I'm cutting things way too close in terms of debt that I've had to take on. and mm. um, That you've had to take on? No, I guess not have to. Okay. I guess it's it's weird because I had a down year, but then this year I've also upped my expenses to the highest they've ever been. So right now I'd give myself like a three or four. Okay. Yeah. So that's your self score. Okay. Yeah. So taking on debt, what what are, what are these debts we're taking on, and why are we taking them on? Uh, well, one is a personal loan um, that I took on to do a private equity investment. Okay. Yeah. When? This was just at the end of last year, barely. Who talked to you? What was this? What was this? What was this opportunity? So I don't know how much I can say in terms of like names and everything like that, but it's a medical device company that's Mm. gaining traction amongst doctors in terms of the aging in place space. Mm. Um, And it's private? Yes. Mm, You're essentially, you're... uh, uh, your venture capitaling, but based on a loan you took out, a personal loan? Not, not the smartest. Definitely not the smartest. Would no. you not do it again if you did it? Or wait. Well, I guess it remains to be seen, right? Because with private equity, it can 10x, 100x, or you can lose no, well, all course, your money. Or you can lose all your money, yeah. right? So When you do that, though, it's usually when you have a ton of money and you're like, all right, I'll write a $100,000 check because I don't care right, if it, it burns or not. Yeah. But you took out a personal loan for this, meaning you have to pay it back? Yeah, and it's at 7% interest. Dude, so it's like, okay. Well, the plan was I was going to pay it off before the end of the year and only take it out for three or four months. It was like a short-term thing. Last year? Yes. Okay. And now it's been almost a year. So what the Okay. It'll be paid off. It definitely Well, it damn better be. I mean, what? That would be terrible if it wasn't paid off. I mean, that's like the lowest expectation. Yeah. (laughs) It'll be paid off. It'll be paid off before the end of this year. Guaranteed. Okay. Guaranteed. By the end of this year, it better be $179,000. Okay. Well, here's here's the problem, though. So with solar, when I was selling before, it was a short-term sale. I talk to the customer, we sign them up, they get installed the next day for their system and I get paid the next week, right? And Mm -hmm. I do anywhere from 10 to 20 of those every single week. And then I had guys working for me and so I'd get pay for running the team, for being a manager. Um, With solar, the pay is higher, but it's a two to three month sales cycle. Okay. So it didn't really- But two or three months have passed a few times since you've taken out this person alone. Yeah. That's true. You either bring in this much money on a yearly basis or you don't. Yeah, that's true. So it, it's kind of a, it's kind of an interesting thing. So I had to pay for moving expenses to relocate. I bought a car, which I shouldn't have, but I did because I wanted to be able to get up the mountains and go ski. So that was the thing. Uh, yeah. My need rent, to buy a new car to do that. <laughs> Yeah. To go up hills. Okay, but you've seen the interstates in Colorado, I'm sure, right? When there's snowstorms and stuff, it gets pretty bad. Okay. Pretty dicey. Okay. 
Okay, snow tires. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did get snow tires. Those were expensive too. Yeah. Well, you got to get snow tires and snowy things. And new car. I don't know. So what? Uh, so okay. Every few months we get the big check. So once the once the ball gets rolling, once I have the pipeline full and I keep it full, then there's no two to three month gap. It's just right at the beginning. Yeah. So I moved to to Colorado. Okay, and so we had to set up the office. I had to figure out the market, figure out a new product because mm-hmm. I went from one that I knew really well and I knew how to sell. To, Where'd you move from? Uh, Atlanta. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. So a new product that I didn't know how to sell in a new place. So I had to learn the process. I had to learn the sales cycle. It was slower than expected at first, but right now I have about 60 or 70 K of commissions in the pipeline. Good. Right. That's Good. if they all Very get good. installed right now. We have some attrition. Before taxes. Not all of them. Okay. Yes. Before taxes. What do we think on average is hitting your account on a monthly basis? Or should we just take this 180 and just- it's, it's so tough to say because okay. it's some months it'll be 50, some months it'll be 4,000. This means you're going to have to strictly budget when you get your thick boy months, you know, mm-hmm. when you get those, those thick dollars, you're sustaining yourself. Until that next thick month comes. The next one hits, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is very strict budgeting at that point. Simple question. Do you follow a budget? Do you have a budget? And do I you do. follow it? I think I sent it to you, actually. Do you follow it? Some of the categories, for the most part, yes. My food Doesn't category, a budget only work if it's followed? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's true. That's okay. true. I will say uh, it's kind of tough because a lot of my lifestyle is tied into what I do for work in terms of recruiting and throwing events for people to come to and hang out at and learn more about the job and things like that. Okay. So the business doesn't pay for those. So that's part of how it works is I'm essentially almost running my own business. Okay. So I get paid this big lump sum, but I take care of a lot of the expenses. They pay for some of it, but a lot of it's out of my pay. Are you in a pyramid scheme that's actually generating you money? (laughs) No. Okay. (laughs) No. Mm. I see some of the parallels, but no. Mm, yeah, you got to recruit your underlings. Yeah. Well, essentially what I'm doing is I'm recruiting their own money. people to set leads for me to go close. Right. And then if they get good enough, then they can also start closing their own deals. But I'm not having to buy the product myself or sell it to people I know. It's right. That, yeah. That's good. That's yeah. good. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at, I guess we can start with the checking account. All right, y'all, we got to talk about something important. Data brokers are making a fortune selling your private data out. And it goes to robocallers and scammers and other people who want to know more about you, like where you live. But that's why I'm excited to talk about today's sponsor, Aura. Aura can identify data brokers exposing your info and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers are legally required to remove your info if you ask them to, but they make it super hard to do. Let Aura handle it for you. You can try Aura free for two weeks using my link in the description below or by going to aura.com forward slash hammer. Aura also does much more to protect you and your family from online threats you can't see. It's really easy to set up so you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and more. You get everything at one affordable price. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online so you can focus on the rest of life with peace of mind. You can either let people continue to exploit and profit off your private information, or you can go to Aura.com forward slash hammer. So head there and start your free two-week trial, or check out the link in the description below. Who, who is your checking account? We have a lot of different things here. Is that the Delta community? Yeah, there's two of them, though. I have a the business. One of them is personal. my business. The other one is personal. personal. I'm not sure which one you have pulled up. It okay, could it be. says personal. So okay. okay, yeah. Okay. So let's see. Balance on... Oh, savings balance forward. Is that something separate? Oh, yes. Okay, I get it. So in savings, it actually started at 5163 ended at 4989 It's not like a big decrease by mm-hmm. any means, but why is it decreasing? Why are you taking up 58 bucks, 38 bucks, 83 dollars? Usually not a good sign. So that account um, is where I store my uh, security deposits for my rental property. And it's also oh, where I put the additional capex expenses so when i get rents i take so my mortgage is 2050 it cash flows to 2700 
So I take the remainder and I put that in that account. But last month, wait, I think, it cash flows twenty seven hundred. Sorry, or? cash flows seven hundred. Oh, okay. twenty seven hundred is the total rent I yeah, collect. Yeah, I was gonna say that's mm-hmm. incredible. Okay. Yeah, it's, no, I wish. I, yeah. That'd be insane. Wait, wait, wait. What's your mortgage on this thing? Two thousand fifty. Every month. That's a cash flow, isn't it? Seven hundred bucks. That's a bad cash on cash return, at least. It, it's not as great as it could be, but it was. I bought it to live in it, and then I ended up moving right at the end of the year. So I bought oh, it in February okay. so of you last buy year it for an investment property. I bought it to, to house hack it. So I was going to live in the basement and have people rent out upstairs. Gotcha. And then now I just have the whole thing. I was going to say, cause like, uh, like I do minimum 12% cash on cash return when I take out yeah. leverage for a house and I have like a mortgage. that's like $90,000 in it. Cash flow is just about that. Which I actually, well. I wanted to ask you about that too. Cause you have a couple houses out in the Midwest yeah. in college towns. Mm-hmm. How did you like pick that as your, your niche. No, this is where I'm from. So okay. I know the area. Yeah. Knew the market, knew, yeah. you know, what happened. And I have good demand. connections there that I can trust. Interesting. And stuff, so. yeah. okay. and we, we can dive more into that later. Yeah, no, I'd definitely like to. But yeah, so the extra, you know, call it 700 bucks or so, I just, I don't count that as money that I get. I just put it in the account. But okay. I think that month I had a fridge that had to be replaced. Yeah, because money only left. Nothing went in for the entire month. Yeah, I think that's what happened that month. A fridge was replaced, so you took out eighty-three dollars, thirty-eight dollars for the eight dollars. Maybe that was the month. Oh. Maybe that was last month. I don't know which. Okay. Was that the previous month that you got there, no, no, or is no, that showing for February? Okay. No, the fridge broke this past month. No, I don't know what happened then. Okay. I have to keep um, better track of that. So what do we have in here? We have utility bills, paying off some things, journal voucher, journal voucher. Well, that's you getting paid though, isn't it? That looks like money coming in. Which yeah, one? Deposits. Are yeah. they Zelle or uh, what is it? It says journal voucher. How much is it? Oh, it is a Zelle, yes. Uh, and then, it, so you started with 1,333 in here. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Ended with 992. Under that 1,000 that I like to see kind of at a minimum. Same. Yeah. Or a good bit more than that. The draw transfer fee. Ugh. And then just paying off cards. Let's see. We have an Amex payment. Yep. So it doesn't look like you spend money on here, really. This is uh, transfers, which makes sense. I think that's the best use of a checking account, typically. Uh, if, if where the money is being spent is being managed well, of course. Okay. Well, let's look at the business checking. So... Are you, you're a contractor then? Mm, to ninety nine. Okay, so you're tracking everything for yep. tax deductions and everything. Perfect. Yep. Good, good, good. So I run, I get paid through an S Corp that I have set up and then it's a pass through account to then perfect my personal account. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm glad you're on top of that. So what we have here with the checking account, we started at 16,000. That's fantastic. We ended at 6,000. That's fantastic. Okay. So a couple months ago, it was at... Forty-two thousand. So Why is it a six thousand? So that's, that's scary. Couple months ago. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. When with everything and happening in Denver right now, I'm spending more money than I've ever spent before, just on my lifestyle and on everything else. And it's also taking time for these deals to go through the pipeline. So that's why I said I'd rate myself like a four right now because I'm making less than I've made in the past. And I'm also spending more than I've ever spent before. So I'm cutting it way closer than I'd normally like to. I'd cutting it close is something different than what this is. This isn't cutting it close. This is draining. So what is it? What is it exactly that we're seeing go out? What did you you say? You started started at 60 or 40? 40 would have been in October. October? Okay. Yes. So within from fall to spring, we've gone 40 to 6,000. That's not cutting it close. That's losing $35,000 essentially. So my monthly budget, all the expenses together, comes up to about 8,800. Is everything aligning? Maybe the business expenses are different? Are there, or is that being budgeted? Appropriately, not as well. Only as it should your be. personal, not okay. as well as it should be. Well, that's. I guess that's also fact. See, it's tough because it blurs the line a lot, and I need to do a better job of keeping them organized and tracking them. It's good that they're separate. Mm-hmm. I try it's my not best good to. that it's not being managed, and we've lost thirty five thousand dollars. Because as if we want to consider this like the business emergency fund, okay. really. 
I don't know what it takes to run, but with where it's gone in that many months, that six thousand dollars scares me. Yeah, yeah I like the number that too. you said is coming in. How much is coming in again? Let me notate that. Um, so it it just depends on how much actually gets installed, right? You gave me a number. It's going to be between sixty and seventy thousand. Okay, and I'm within how long? Should be within the next two months, three months. Okay. And then we're Ooh, starting our months, that might be we're okay. starting our busy season. So summer is when I mean that's when it's the weather's nice. That's when we work the most. Um, so that's why I said this year should be if everything goes the way it's projected based on numbers, it should be the best year yet. So I see you transferring to uh, yourself, paying off some cards, legacy partners. Legacy that, big, partners yeah, like is 4, that's my rent. So oh, geez, you're paying, wait, you're paying your rent through your business account. So that's probably something I need to change. That is something when you I need first, to change. When I first set it up, the justification was the whole reason I moved to Denver was to start this office there. So I don't think that's going to hold up in the taxes. <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't think so. Either. I mean, you can probably, you can, if you do a, a portion of it, cause I do use a lot of the office space. Yes. There's office it? space there. You can write that off. I have people over all the time for events and get togethers and stuff. Okay. We can do write offs. What I don't think you can just put your rent on here. Okay. Obviously yeah. a CPA would know much more detail than I do, but either way, that seems a little, bleh. And then we have Capital this. One card, 7,733 out. My goodness, that's a lot of money. And then the rest is just transferring to yourself. So, yeah, the pastor makes sense, but we're also paying off. That's an expensive $7,733 out for a card. Yeah. When I go through and I, I look through all the expenses and everything, it, it adds up pretty quick. So what makes sense from here then would be, okay, so we did your personal account, checking account, business checking account. Let's see what else we have. So we have a savings, a Lotus thing. What's that? Wait, where did I read the word? Lo I don't know. Well, we Not have sure. uh, like status tracker, snapshot, something, online savings. Oh, the know Ally High Yield. This, oh, this is Ally. Okay. Yeah, so that's, it, and it has only $2,000 in it, which is no, way, much. is that not the so one you're saying? Huh? Which one are you saying? Oh, no, 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 yeah, I was just saying, yeah, it's not much. No. Uh, so is this considered your emergency fund? It was where I was putting, yeah, I mean, yes, um, and it, a couple of years ago, or not, not a couple of years ago, sorry, at the beginning of last year, before I made the move and had to draw from it and everything, it was at 10 or 15. I think it was up to 18,000. You're making me nervous. The counts are just going down. Yeah. They're just going down. I'm nervous. Yeah. I'm glad we're having a couple of thick checks coming, but we don't even know what the debt looks like yet. Okay. Spark business cash. Is this the one you said you would want to look at on your That's the phone? business credit card. Okay. Yeah. I can look at that. Yeah. Uh, the very, very recent on your phone. Yeah, this would be here. The balance went up from the statement. Okay, well, you clearly don't. Have, you, 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 do you pay this off every single month? Pretty much, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, because that's a lot of money, and I don't see that coming in. Yeah, so. So that's why these, the business account was getting drained. So the first two months or I'm sorry, it's not the first two months. The last two months have been the first time that I haven't fully paid off my credit cards. Cause I, I don't like paying interest 25, 24%, whatever it is, is stupid, right? We know that the problem is as these deals, and I've actually had a couple, uh, go in last week. I've had some deals go in this week and I have a few scheduled for the next couple weeks. But during the time, this initial 60 to 90 days that it was taking them to go through the pipeline, uh, I have to prioritize, like I can't not pay my rent. If I'm $2,000 oh, yeah, no, sure. $2, short on this, yes, I'll pay interest, but it's not yeah. gonna ding my credit, it's not gonna get me evicted, so well, I have to no, prioritize. Well, no, but at that point, then we're just spending too much money. We're just living beyond our means. Yeah, and it, you're the probably is, right. You've gone from forty thousand dollars to six thousand dollars in your business account, and this right here is eight thousand dollars that you have to pay off. And clearly, it's been draining because we're overspending, and we're at a place where you have to make an eight thousand dollar payment, or else high interest. I don't know the interest rate, but it's going to probably hit it. So I think last 
month. If we go to it, there's a way too many here. That's not. Also, you, while he's looking, you should subscribe. You should subscribe because I love you. So this was the last payment that was made. That was on March 17th. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. And we are going out. We're getting that Chick-fil-A and food store and Grill North, 25 bucks, Raising Cane's. Lots of gas, but you drive a lot for your job. Yeah, and so I'm on the road a lot, fine. so I don't have, you know, it's time to cook. No. Mm-mm. Okay. Don't do that to me. All right, then let me Jason's be honest. Sally, McDonald's, yeah, be honest. I hate to cook, and I hate cleaning up, and I'd rather go get go. food, and I feel like with my job, I can afford to do it, whether that's what right What do you mean not. you can afford to do it? You've gone from $40,000 to $6,000. We've gone from $10,000 to $2,000 in your savings. And is there a different definition of afford that I'm not aware of usually afford means you can buy it and not lose all your money okay can we can we meet in the middle then while we wait for this to there's a come middle in, while we wait for the the checks to come in i should have been cooking from home Taco but i'm used Bell. to living this lifestyle denny's yeah i know but it's just like big boy pants you know we put them on <laughs> because like off. okay yeah, I'll take that. That's fair. Gyros or Giros. Giros. Jeez, I always struggle with that. I, I love Giros, and I, yet I can never pronounce them when I read the word. I love Giros. Jason's Deli, McDonald's, Raising Cane's, Jack in the Box, $22 of interest, Capital One member fee of $95, Subway, United Airlines, McDonald's, that was probably to come here, yeah. Airbnb, that was also probably for here. 5279 Now your friends probably split it with you, so they sent you some monies. So that's actually, um, that is where, that's for my employees. Okay. That's part of, since I'm 1099, I have to cover those expenses. Yeah. McDonald's, Chick-fil-A. And by the way, these are all like, an endless amount of purchases and just like these are like four purchases a day <laughs> yeah a lot of these you know some gas and then this and that snacks lunch Chipotle, dickies cuba cuba car i mean we're just spending money dude it's just flying out to and be this, fair, wasn't even, this was this, we're halfway through this month and i'm not even through the first half of this month to be fair the five thousand dollars for airbnb that's a not a common thing that was just well what that's good this time so that's McDonald's and Olive Garden and Olive Garden. Come on. What are we doing? Chipotle, IHOP, Wendy's, Starbucks. That's all within one day, by the way. Chipotle, IHOP, Wendy's, Starbucks. And the every day just like repeats that trend plus gas plus snack plus both 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 afford. No, we cannot afford it. What you can do is when you get a thick boy check, you take that money. You allocate it where you need to allocate it to, and then you say, okay, this is how much I can spend of it until the next thick check, and then you make your budget surrounding that. But there's no business budget right now. We're just spending because we're spending, because we want it. We don't want to peck a sandwich. We don't want to do this. We don't want to do that. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, these payments are insane. And you don't fully pay it off because on this statement, $22 in interest, we saw the interest being charged there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're paying interest. So these, like, like I was saying, these last couple months are the first time I've paid interest on these cards. It's because Probably you're yet. down to $6,000 in the business checking. We're down to $2,000 in the online savings. You're in an unsustainable path right now. And if this money doesn't come for another three months, so we're, it should be coming in in the next couple of weeks. Like I said, I've had a couple. So that was at the beginning when I first moved out to Denver, started selling, and then it takes time to go through the pipeline. So I had a couple of them at first. It was slower, but for the past month to two months, it's been steady. Like last month, I sold 10, no, 15 deals. Nine or 10 of those are going to get installed. On average, I'm going to get three to 5,000 for each one. Mm -hmm. So that's coming in over the next couple of weeks. Good. So, I think, yeah. Goodness. Stressful so though while it. It, while it happens. Well, yeah, you basically yeah. almost drained yourself. To, uh, yeah. Too so, close. this American Express Gold Card, this is a personal card, not business, correct? Good. Hmm. Do you pay the balance off every single time? 
The Until answer last on this month. statement is no. But. Until last month, I did. So what are we doing here? This blows my mind. I will never understand it. This is something I do not get. We have $6,240 at the start of your previous month. And we can only put $2,000 towards it. Oh, that sucks. We know it's going to be accruing interest. But then we still decide to put an additional $1,721 of purchases on there with interest accruing of $157 and fees of $29. So why are we putting money on here if we can't even pay the balance? Where's the logic behind that? Because you're not gaining anything. The honest answer is that I know I'm paying interest. I know right now I shouldn't be doing it. I'm in a tight spot, but I don't want to decrease my lifestyle. That's the honest, honest truth. Well, what, what, do I, what do I do over here if you're just straight up not willing to decrease the lifestyle. If we're not willing to do anything to improve our lives, like where where are we? Well, I am doing what stuff to improve plan? my life. I work 50 to 60 That's hours great, a week. That's great, but you're not willing to cut back on your own self. I'm glad you're a workhorse. That's fantastic. We can celebrate that. That's good. I want many people that are on the side of the table to be workhorses, and they're just not. So, no, you win at that. That's fantastic. Congratulations. But you are not cutting back on yourself and your desires and your needs to improve your life. I guess the thinking is that, okay, yeah, I'll pay a hundred bucks in interest to not have to decrease my expenses during this kind of weird period right now. But then once the money starts flowing back in, like it is going to and already is, then I'll be okay. That's the logic. I'm not saying it's right. I well, it's also been like six months since you started this thing. So what I'm nervous is I don't have in front of me that money coming in, mm -hmm. I can only go off of hope and trust that it is. Mm -hmm. I have nothing else. I have nothing else here. Sure. And we're paying almost $200 in interest and fees. Yeah. And we're putting almost as much on it as we paid off. So right now we're sitting at 6144 at the time of the statement. With a minimum payment of two forty five seventy eight. So what did we spend on here? We already spent like a trillion dollars on your business card on going out to eat and bullshit. We're going NBA league pass. Yeah, that's necessary to live life. Uh, Woodman wine and liquor. Yeah, we need that. Colorado spring cowboys, cowboys, cowboys. Smoothie King. Yeah, desperate to survive. Auto wash. Yeah, you know, couldn't drive a car without getting that glass cleaned. And liquor outlets and Spotify, Prime Video, HelloFresh. I mean, come on, you don't even cook anyway. What's the point of getting it delivered? The Lester Pearl in Denver. We have one of those here. And Is it fun? Uh, it's a pretty cool bar in Denver. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's fine. Lyft, Uber Eats, Uber Eats, Instacart, HelloFresh, Chipotle. Come on, dude. PBS Denver. All right. Support journalism, fine. Cherry Creek. I mean, this is all crap. This is all crap. What confuses me is we're actually... Well, this doesn't make sense. I will do the Anytime Fitness. That's fine. Take care of health. But Uber Eats, Uber Eats, Vesper Lounge, and Audible, and Lyft, and HelloFresh, and all this food, and uh, all this crap you're stupid spending. But you were already going out to eat practically three times a day on the credit card. But then we have this credit card as well that we're adding extra things on. This is insane. When's the last... It's like you go out to eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, coffee, snack on a daily basis. When I'm on the road, yeah. Well, you were apparently on the road 365 days a year. Not quite, but a lot, yeah. Dude, this is, that's unsustainable. And if you get that money in, that's fantastic. You can finally catch up. But what scares me is you're playing catch up from the craziness you've been on the last six months. Mm -hmm. You know, when we enter slow season, are you just going to be going into the hole again, and then we just have to always play catch up instead of just getting far ahead. I respect, I respect the no, not, but. Well, do you can see I tell why you? I'm nervous about it. I, I definitely do, and I'm I'm nervous too, and that's kind of why I, like, I'm glad that you're talking to me and you wanted to do this because I know I I kind of need the kick in the pants, especially for where I'm at right now. But for the past three, three or four years of my life, I've lived on less than thirty percent of my income. And I've been okay. able to save it, invest it, you know, I like I'm the reason I watch your show is because I love what you do. And I think you're helping people and you're doing an awesome thing. Subscribe, by the way, get them to half a mil. But it, yeah, 
just right now is an odd spot with the move and learning a new product. The move was six new, months ago. All right. Yes, but I also spent way too much time dicking off skiing for like the first two months because it was great snow weather. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, it really just comes down to like growing up, though. <laughs> it really does. It's strapping on the big boy pants. And we're like, okay, we're going to act like we're 24 years old and not 17. Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, there's... 10 months of the year that I grind my ass off and then two months that I usually... That's fine, but it, what is being demonstrated is you can afford it. I'm down for spend the fun money that you have, absolutely, that you can afford as long as we're investing a bunch of money and we're doing all this stuff, but right now we're just draining every account. And we're just like, the money better come. Uh, okay. We do have investments. And this, I'm, I'm happy with this at your age. So this looks like this is with Fidelity. We have uh, Roth IRA... An individual IRA, I'm guessing, is what that one is. Yeah, it's a Roth and then a uh, just a br taxable okay. account. Yeah, cool. when I max okay. out the IRA. Now, with this, I'm happy to see the 47178 So we can celebrate that. What is that invested in? Uh, just S&P 500, not index fund, ETFs. Okay. And then some, you know, world. Oh. There's two of them. I can't remember the exact ones, but one's like a broad world index fund and then the other one is the S&P. Oh, okay. And then $17,000 in crypto? Mhm. Mm okay. It was a lot more. I yeah, I bet I'd rather have a fully funded emergency fund. I would too, but I I can't exactly yes, you can. sell all the crypto to yes, you can. I could, yes, you but can. it's down so much right now. I it's sure going it to go back up. And you do not know that. No, we don't we that. don't know for sure. No. But if it really came down to it, if I was not able to pay my rent or if, you know, credit card debt was piling up, then I would sell it. I well, would. I just hope it doesn't. I've never had I've never had to sell investments to pay bills before. I I've hope not. Unfortunately, we're close to that place. I hope you just don't. I hope it just doesn't have like a big crash before you need to do it. And yeah. that's something we don't know. True. No we one knows for sure. We can't say it will. We can't say it's not. Tell Talk to, I don't have the same for him. Tell me about this stupid business loan or uh, personal loan. What's the amount? Uh, what's left in principal is 19200 and some change. Mm. But why? No. What was, what was it? That was, that what was, was the total the, amount. What was the total? Oh, the total amount, amount was 25000 You just put that into this company? Mm-hmm. Dude. The valuation's doubled since I did it. It's cool, at, sell it's at out. 50 mil now. Why don't you take your 25,000 hours in winnings then if someone wants to buy your stake? A guy who's way smarter than me, whose opinion I respect, said with private equity investments, they either go to zero, and if you less than 10x, you might as well not have done it. Yeah, but you're paying 7% on this. What is your minimum monthly payment? On the loan, $756, I believe. Jeez. Okay. So mortgage of 2052. What's penthouse? That's my, my rent. Oh, that's right, because you have that house you lived in before, and then, okay. Yeah. And the tenants pay the mark. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, so that's the one that's cash flowing 700 okay. bucks. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I just put that, I reinvest all of that. I just don't even Dude, act why like it's you real. Just, you make money. Why didn't you just, instead of instead of borrowing at seven stupid percent, you just put $25,000 towards it? There's no reason you shouldn't have had $25,000 laying around. Um, I didn't at the time. Well... Yeah, but there's no reason you shouldn't have. Okay, I did, but it would have put me in this position where I'm close to the breaking point, but then... And clearly, that's we're why. Just, everything's messed up then. What I would say is if I was going to invest in something again, I'm what not is this? taking out a loan ever what, what is this? Forerunner? That's the... Is car. that a car payment? Yeah. I didn't have a statement for that either. I think I sent you that in the, the debts I had, though. I don't necessarily look at those. Mm. Uh, Is that my that budget death, that you're looking at? Death. 600 stupid $57 a stupid month. What? 
What possibly? Also, your penthouse is ridiculous. It's in the middle of like Denver, the top of a building. Yeah, it's a corner. I'm sure it's fantastic. Invite me over sometime, but that's so stupid. Oh, that's ridiculous. Whenever you're in Denver, hit me up. It's a two bedroom. (sighs) Square footage? Uh, 1900. Okay. Oh, it was okay. way, way nicer of a place than I've ever gotten before. I'm the sure. The only Four reason that hours. I did it is if I'm going to be interviewing and hiring guys and saying, hey, like, you should come do this. You can make really good money. Not being from there, I wanted something tangible I could show them. I the love all your attempted justifications. That's so. He's right. That's what they are. I know it, too. What is your total balance due on this forerunner? Uh, 31,500 and some change. Dude, what the, what's the interest rate? 7%. Dude, what are we doing? Why did we, why, why are we taking out an additional stupid loan at 7% when we have a car loan? Buddy, you're just, you're just making me go crazy right now. It says, I feel like I'm just losing my mind. Okay. Death. COL, basic COL. What's that? That's uh, it's the Excel formula to just show like what my yearly expenditures are. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. So before this year, what is it like one oh seven a year that it's showing? One oh six. One oh six. Up until this year, I was spending like less than fifty thousand a year, making over two hundred grand. Oh, go back to that. (laughs) What? The rent's killing me. Because right rent, now, rent is killing me. your total is uh, $15,000 more than your income in terms of what's going out. Your expenditures yeah. are lower. And your minimum that you have to pay, and you didn't even include your uh, minimum monthly payment on your debt, on your... On the business cards? No, 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 no. You didn't include the minimum monthly payment on your $25,000 loan you took out. No, I did, actually. Did so that's... It, uh, it should be at the bottom. It says... I think it's parents' oh, vivid you're right. plus... You're right. Uh, okay. Yeah. So with everything then, what you need to survive, and we're, we're throwing it out there on screen in terms of what his budget is, that he laid out for us, $8,880 a month, dude. I wouldn't say... So- I wouldn't say anybody needs to spend that much. That's just what I... No, of course not, what but I'm that's telling. what you've signed up for and you are forced to pay on a monthly basis. Yeah. Or else, bad things. All right, I'm going to say that on average last year, I mean, of course, you would write off taxes here and there, here and there, but on the most average month last year, and this was before your income dipped by moving, Mm -hmm. I mean, the last few months last year, yeah. Yeah. But about $9,666 after taxes, after setting money aside for taxes. And you are doing that well, correct? I don't have an account right now. So... Yeah, no, I my incoming tax liability. I talked to my accountant earlier this From week. Last year mm-hmm. is nineteen thousand and four hundred dollars. Surprised you got it down to that. That's not bad. He's good at what he does. I don't know how he does it all, but of course you don't have that money. Not yet. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. The not yet keeps uh, playing, but guess what? <laughs> With that taxes and with the crap you're already behind on and just replenishing your accounts, that not yet turns into you going to have zero dollars left. <laughs> so right now, do, you, do we have a total of all those? I want to say of, what? of all the debts that I have. And then there's 11,000 in student loans, but there's zero percent interest right now. No payments. Yeah, but that's about to start up yeah. real quick. Probably like one hundred fifty dollars a month in a monthly payment. Yeah. As soon as interest kicks back up, and those are gonna, I'm just gonna pay them off. But probably do the car and the personal loan is gonna be the first one to ridiculous. go. Ridiculous! I hate so that one too. Stupid. So stupid. I'll accept that. That's fair. I just have no other word for it. No, it's fair. Risky. Is that a right word? Certainly. If I told you that I, if numbers go the way they're projecting, I have a clear path to make over 350 this year, would you be a little bit? Maybe, but I don't see it in front of me. Projections are projections. 
Sure. If I can see something, then there it is. But I can't go off of just that right now. Yeah. Especially since this, these last couple months, this has been absolutely nothing. So either way, total debt, $67,740, 54 cents. With an average being brought in of probably like 10000 bucks a month after, after you set aside money for taxes and stuff, according to last year's money. Sure. Again, I'm, I'm not going to go off for of projections. I don't know about what we have in terms of last year, in terms of the work you did. Mm-hmm. Ten thousand dollars. Where, of course, your needs category in terms of minimum monthly payments in order to survive comes out to eighty-eight percent of your post-tax income. Of is last your needs category income. of mm-hmm. last year's income. But the reason that I moved to of Denver, which we haven't seen any of this year's income. True, but I already have we're the deals in the pipeline. In. Right. That's awesome, but we're I've over already, a quarter in. We're in Q two. Yeah, and that's just because the first part of the year I I slacked too much. I, I shouldn't have. That's on me. And I'll accept that, but I mean, with the numbers, personal responsibility that I've been is great, but you got to change something, or else it's personal responsibility is nothing. Without action, like we can say, "Oh, I regret it," but let's get action. Either way, eighty-eight percent. That was your needs. Needs categories, effed, absolutely blown up. A lot of it, that penthouse, really. That was the biggest, biggest increase in my expenses. Because if that wasn't a thing, this would be. It's half your needs category. It is. Yeah. Also and it's nice, but forty-four percent of your income, essentially, right around there, forty to forty-four percent of last year's income. I hope it's three hundred or whatever. I mean, that's awesome. We can celebrate it if it is. I hope we do a follow-up at the end of the year, and I can come back sure. and have a no debt. We can pop some champagne. everything wiped out. Hey, maybe you can come visit. In in where this is, I would love to see that penthouse. And where this is. Because I'm a slut for a good view. Oh, it's good. Mountain view, too. With where this is, really, I mean, you have like $1,000 to put things toward. I mean, what, what's the point of even laying out a plan for right now? Because the, the income is like what? Everything's being drained. It's like death. Really, what is going to have to happen, essentially, is when big chunks of money come in, mm-hmm. we got to... I'd move down from the penthouse next time that's up. Get into it eventually, but not until we're out of stupid debt. Yeah. Either way. Well, it's kind of like, it's one of those things that I did it because I needed some credibility. Like, no, we, we, we heard the place. justification. Already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's good. the justification. But now that that's passed, I probably won't re-sign that lease. It was fun. It's going to be a great memory. I'll remember it. You for can the buy rest a penthouse condo at some point, but I should probably buy one, not rent one, huh? It would be better. Well, maybe if, if it can be affordable. Again, this is like 44% but of your income. Either way, either way, either way, with the cash flow, you get an extra 700 from your previous place, which is also good. But you can't factor that because CapEx and vacancy expenses and all that too. So well, I, are you that's setting aside proper percentages by that? Mm-hmm. I, okay. I, I set aside uh, 3% of the total rent Okay. for... Uh, Future repairs and then an extra three percent for vacancies. I think that's exactly what I did. I think I did three point five for capex and three percent for vacancies. But really, what I do is I just take the whole whatever is above the rent, so the seven hundred bucks, and I just put it all in account and I pretend it doesn't exist. Okay. So that's one thing I'm doing right. Okay. Either way, I mean, debt's not going to be paid off if this is the financial situation that we're looking at. But either way, when the big checks come in, they're going to have to. Uh, refill the business account. They're going to have to pay the taxes that are owed. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be much left over then to pay off the debt Mm -hmm. in big chunks. So from the money that is barely left over, you're going to have to make sustainable until you get another big check. So you're going to have to strictly budget out what you have left over. You're going to have to cut back like the food spending like crazy. You're going to have to cut back the fun, the vacation, the bull. And then once those few months are up and you, um, get a big check and you're able to, you know, put the same amount aside for the next few months. You can take that remaining extra that doesn't have to go towards paying taxes and replenishing the business account to then putting it towards, I would do the personal loan first. Then, well, yeah. no, I'd pay off the Amex first. Hopefully yeah. that should be. Hopefully yeah. Depending. Both, both credit cards, business and personal first, then the personal loan, then the car. Then the no, ta- sorry. Taxes. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, that's a given. We already talked about we that. That's a, the first thing that's going to happen. Yeah. And then <clears throat> I'd sell the Bitcoin right now, put it towards the debt. 
Because you're not going to win <sighs> compared to the interest that's being accrued anyway. I, you're, I know you're probably right. I just can't, like, I can't justify that. Because I'm a believer in crypto. Like, I, I don't think well, it's going to million X, thousand, whatever. That's Be a probably believer past, in crypto when you're out of really bad debt. <sighs> right now we say, okay, we're an adult. We're going to take care of the debt. That's losing interest. You can, you can put a certain percentage of your portfolio towards crypto. I don't, but you can uh, once you're out of bad debt. But right now we are in one, two, three really bad debts with student loans to come. So here in the next two to three weeks, that's because I've already done the work in the past, right? So it's not going to be like big check, small check, big check, small check because I've done the work and I'm continuing to do the work to sell and put in new deals and put them through the pipeline. It's going to be consistent starting in the next. I mean, I have installs Good. going then in sell, this week. Then next sell week. the crypto now, pay off the bad debt, replenish it in a few months. If all the bad debt has gone by then. You said buy more crypto in a couple months? If that's what you absolutely want to do, would I do that? Of course not. But Well, the reason that I don't want to sell it is because I'd be selling it at a loss. Yeah, no, because it sucks. We'll see, but... Yeah, we'll always see. I but rather, it's a small percent, right? I don't put a ton of money into crypto. No, but you have really bad debts and it's just sitting there. And your emergency fund is nothing. So you think I should wipe out the whole account, the whole 17000 in crypto? To take care of... This Amex, which is probably like 25% interest, 7% personal loan, which is objectively stupid, and the $31,500 car loan. I do also have a payout I should be getting soon, actually two of them. Um, one of them was from a real estate syndicate that I did in 2020. So they're getting ready to sell the properties and I should get back about 25 or 30 grand. Good, that just, again, and then, what's gonna matter is what you can set aside to make sure you're sustained, what can go to pay off of the, all the bad debts and fill the emergency fund? I've laid out the way I did it. Clearly, you're not in agreement with that. You're not willing to even touch something like crypto, of which if you want to play with, again, like a gambling game, you can in the future. But So which one, if I were to sell it all right now on camera in front Amex of you, if I were to sell it all right now, right here? Yeah, you'd pay on off the camera. immediately. Okay, so that one would get paid off. Probably like at what, 20, 30% interest or something I think stupid? it's 24. Yeah. yeah. 24. So that's And then, okay, so that's enough. that's 5,000. There's 17 in the crypto, or mm -hmm. almost 18. What would you do with the other 12,000? I'd put the rest towards uh, that $19,000 personal loan. And as soon as you clear this all up by putting as much money towards it as possible and building an emergency fund, you need to have at least. Do you know? Sorry to interrupt. Do you know if since I'm selling it at a loss, couldn't I write that off at the end of the year? You could do some tax loss harvesting, I think. I don't know much about crypto. Your tax person can we, will know. Can we look? Because if, if I can harvest those losses, I'll sell it right now on camera. Simply put, from like the top like four things here, yes. Um, but again, I am not a tax expert, but that is what so far every single thing in here says. Let's see. Once you realize those losses, but you are selling it in this year, though. So, again, this is not my thing. Yeah. You're selling it in the year 2023. You might be able to write it off for the year 2023. I don't know if you could for 2022. So Whatever. let's, for example, on Bitcoin, I'm down almost four grand all time. Because I bought a bunch when it was at 50, 60K because I was FOMOing like an idiot. This I can't sell. So that's staked. If you know what that means, it's just that I put the money in and it's locked up until they decide that I, that they want to release it. That's sh why would anyone ever? It's 4% a year that you get back. Great. So it's not even beating high yield savings right now. Are they that high? I thought it was like three, eight. When I did this rates were low. They were like 0.5%. Yeah. Would it make you happy if I did it right now? Of Sold course. the whole thing. Yeah, and pay off your stupid credit card and pay off most of the loon. If you want to get, again, well, one thing I was saying is if you really want to have that much in there, the quicker you pay off the whatever's left of the personal loan in your $31,000 car and get a fully funded emergency fund, the quicker you do that, the quicker you can put the same amount in there and the less amount of time you have away from that, the more it's like, it never even left. So what would be, uh, 
was I going to ask you? Okay. So in your opinion, then knowing my expenses, what would be a fully funded emergency fund? Yeah. Six, six months for you. I'd probably do about 40 to $50,000. You do, you, you, you need that in your business. That's commission based. I agree. Cause nothing's guaranteed, right? I could get hurt. I could like anything could happen. When so. people are business owners and you kind of are, I actually prefer like 12 months. I do 12 months for myself, you know, for like salaried employees. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Six months, but just risk level. They're charging me $195 in fees to sell this. Why'd you get into this bull dude? Well, that's Coinbase. That's not crypto itself. Why'd you get into Coinbase? Do you want to see? No, I mean, I believe you. Um, okay. Good lad. I can't do the rest of it, but... I'll Just sell make that. that go to the Amex. Make it go to the Loon. You'll bear or I keep calling it Loon because I wrote Loon for like Looney. I don't know why. Uh, either way, for your personal loan. So that's thirteen thousand. When after this, I'll do the Amex and then I'll put the rest towards the loan. Yeah. So that should leave me with uh, twelve thousand on the personal loan. And so that'll be gone. Again, by... want to pay the taxes and you'll want to do this and that and this and that. With when these checks come, mm. you filed an extension. Yes, I did. Good. Yeah. Because yeah, I think I have, time. yeah, I think I have some other depreciation that my accountant has to write out. So we had to extend anyways. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've laid out what I think from there. I just put some money towards making sure you have enough to sustain accurately budget, follow the budget. If you don't, what's the point of any of this Then pay off the other debts as quick as you can. Student loans depend on the interest if it's 4% or higher. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when that comes. Either way, that's what I would do. And then after, after all the debts are gone, yes, you're in a good place for 24 in terms of investment, but like we can, you know, you can start making sure you're a multi, multi-millionaire by investing minimum 20% every time. Yeah, the short-term finances are a mess right now. And the, yes. it has to get cleared up. And the short-term finances can turn into a long-term mess if not cleaned up quickly. Mm, or if they get out of control. That's where the sure. urgency is to sell the crypto. And that's where the urgency is to beat it down as quick as possible and cut back on all unnecessary expenses. Unfortunately, you've locked yourself into a lot of high expense expenses, but anything we can cut back on and just throw everything at this until we have a fully funded emergency fund, then we're good. Emergency fund, paid off all the debts, taxes, that'll be done. Yep. I mean, I, realistically, it's going to be end of the summer by like August or September. I hope so. I'm not going to project because the money's not there, but yeah. Hopefully we'll see that. Yeah. And then, so what about after that though? Cause I'm, you know, one of the things that I like about you is you're helping people learn how to clean up the short term, but then also to set themselves up for the long term. Long term, right? especially with where your income is. If I was there and it's what I personally do now, I would make sure my needs, well, personally, I make sure my needs aren't, okay, well, never mind. It's not personally what I do now. Cause I just, my, my needs are like quite minimal. On autopilot, for the income. basically. But either way, I would just 50, 30, 20 with where your income is, you can spend 20% on fun, and that's a lot of money. Invest, yeah. invest 30%, and then your needs. Can have yourself a nice little penthouse apartment. Uh, no more than 50%. But either way, investing should be minimum 20% of your post-tax. Mm -hmm. Make sure you are having fun once you have a fully funded emergency fund. Taxes are taken care of. Make sure you're setting aside 30%. Mm -hmm. Taxes maybe 35% with depending what, well, um, yeah, 30% probably. Yeah, and make sure you are having fun at that point and that you're living within good needs. But not until then, cut back. That's what I would do. Yeah, I, realistically, my, my lifestyle doesn't need and I don't want it to inflate more than it's at now. Uh, they say like lifestyle creep, you start making money, you start spending more money. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a case study on that because I controlled it for a long time, but it's, you know, it's been creeping up. So I, that's my biggest priority right now is to focus on that. Yeah. Cause I, I would like to be living on less than 20% of my income right now. Obviously that, that biggest factor on that is growing my income. Yeah. And I do have a path right now to ha have that grow by 20 to 30% per year, as long as I'm doing the things that I need to be doing. Um, but I, yeah, my biggest thing right now, once I get all of this cleared up is I'd like to 
start buying more properties. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. We, we have a path to get there eventually, but yeah. for now, main picture, get out of mess. We can talk about that stuff in the follow-up <laughs> because it's, just, it's not even on the brain right now. It's just not in the situation. Okay. For Christian's Hammer Financial Score, let's break it down into the five categories. For spending in a budget, zero out of 10. He doesn't budget. He's overspending. His accounts are being drained. His debt, two out of 10. It's not great. It's high interest and it's across, you know, credit cards at 24%. A personal loan to invest. I mean, come on. But he's not in collections and stuff like that. And the interest rates on the personal loan and the car are not the worst we've seen. So two out of 10. Retirement for his age. 8 out of 10. Of course, it can always be better to get that 10 out of 10, but still, he's in a very good spot when it comes to retirement. But I will take some points away, one point, because some of it's in crypto. Now, emergency fund, there's some money there, but it is very lacking, especially for his minimum monthly needs. It's going to be a 3 out of 10. Real estate, 7 out of 10. Very happy as a rental property, but he's obviously renting his penthouse and he doesn't live in a personal residence that he owns. So all that together, it's going to aggregate down to 4 out of 10. So his guess was actually correct. Make sure to check out all the fun things in the description below, like the resources I have provided. And don't forget to follow my Instagram and Twitter. Thanks.